What's up you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I am that props girl. And today it is my 10 year anniversary of doing props. And I can't believe that it's been 10 years uh, since I started doing this. And yeah, I was working on a school production of Annie. I was still in school at the time and my teacher saw something in me that I didn't know was there. And he said, you'd be really good on props. It sparked a career and <laughs> I, I really can't believe that. That's not what I actually started filming for. I was just reflecting because I've actually just ended another show and um, I was consoling a friend of mine. Because I still work with a lot of kids as well, I am often telling kids the same story and I, I was telling my friend this yesterday as well and, and I thought that would probably make a very good video because it's something that I don't think enough people talk about and um, even though it coincides weirdly with my anniversary but it's something that I definitely learnt on my first production and, and it sticks with me ever since then. But before we start, ignore the rustling in the background. I have a cat over there and I have a dog over there and they don't like each other. And the dog does not like the fact that I'm in here with the cat filming, so apologies for any rustling. What I wanted to say is in relation to mental health and it's a strange topic because as I said, it's not often talked about, but theatre people will understand what I mean. And that is that post-show depression is a real thing. And it's not a medical condition, it's not, you know, it's not medically diagnosed depression. It is just a feeling or a range of feelings that come over you when a show that means a lot to you comes to an end. Because basically, if you're like me and you're a designer or a person in production for the show, you could start with a show before it's even cast. So Frozen, for example, which is on in June, I knew that that was happening months before it was even cast. And that happens with a lot of shows that I designed for. So in some respects, my head gets invested in the show before my heart does, because my heart doesn't always get invested until I'm either running the show or we're a couple of weeks out. Because I generally have a lot of shows in my calendar and I, I can't give my heart to every single one of them. I'll just be emotionally fatigued. But your heart gets invested in shows. But now there, this doesn't happen to me for every single show. I don't get post-show depression or post-musical depression, as it's often known as as well, after every show. Not, definitely not. I used to when I did less shows, but now it only really happens to shows that I have a particular connection with. Of course, I, I often love elements or a lot of the shows I work on, but there are some shows that are just really special and they just stick with you and, and Chess was one of those for me as was Priscilla last year and because that show means so much to you it affects you when it's over because you have invested time and energy and finances and, and, and things into that show and, and you've given it your all and all of a sudden it's not there anymore. That's the beautiful and gorgeous and utterly bittersweet thing about theatre is that it's fleeting, it doesn't last. It It is something that is different because every single show is different. Every single night of a performance is different because it's live and things happen and, and sometimes someone can fall over in a dance number and you have to work your way around that. And that's what makes it so special. It's not like TV, you can't just pause it. You blink and you'll miss it. And that's why I love theater. But because of that, you do get so invested in it. I just wanted to explain the analogy that I often use when I'm explaining it to people who either are going through it and don't understand the emotion. So usually it's a lot of people who are uh, newer to theatre. And as I said, a lot of kids that I work with, I use this analogy. Or if I'm explaining it to someone who's maybe not in the theatre world and they don't understand what's going on. If you are not a fan of Narnia, this may not make sense. But if you are, um, I'm, a, I'm sorry, there are a couple of spoilers in this analogy and if you don't want to hear them maybe stop watching the video but um it's basically like you're lucy and you've gone off to narnia you know the show you've gone through the wardrobe and you are in this world you're creating this world alongside people no matter where you are if you're a crew member if you're a cast member it doesn't matter where you are you're part of this team this this family which is creating this show and for that time that show is your world and for a lot of people their world stops turning because because their sole focus is on the show no matter if the show runs for one week two weeks a month six weeks a year that is their focus for a lot of their life and because it is physically and emotionally draining you are pouring so much into this show and 
when the show ends, it's like you fall back through the wardrobe and time has continued on. The rest of the world has kept spinning, but your world has stopped. And for a short period of time, you are out of sync with reality and with the rest of the world. And that can be quite heartbreaking for people. It can be really hard to adjust back to. And please don't think that it's something that you need to do right away. It can take a couple of days, it can take a couple of weeks uh, to adjust back to reality. Um, and for me, it's a lot easier because I do jump more frequently from shows so I bounce back quicker but I didn't used to when I used to do one show a year my sh that show was everything and it was the thing I looked forward to um, that year and, and I, I was so down when the show was over it does affect you but what I wanted to say is that don't not do theatre because you don't want to feel this because it's not the depression that you remember it's not the sadness, it's, it's the, the joy that you felt performing, it's the fun that you had backstage, it's, it's all of that, it's the laughs you got from the audience, the friends you made that you remember. And so if you are wanting to remember, make a scrapbook or write it down and try and capture those moments because they're the unforgettable moments that you will want to hold on to. Don't not listen to musicals because you're sad that your musical's over. Sing the songs. If you've got to sing them through tears, sing them through tears. Because the reality is, is that you're, if you're fresh off a show, you're probably still saying the lines, you're probably still saying the jokes, you're probably still singing the songs and dancing the dance moves, and that's okay. It's okay to feel like you don't know how to feel. It's all right. It's like you're a snow globe and you've been shaken up and everything's just gone, oh my gosh, everything is up in the air and that's fine. I recommend taking a day, taking a couple of days if you can, either off work or having a weekend to realign yourself. But please keep doing shows because as I said, theater is a beautiful thing. It's fleeting and it's heartbreaking that it is, but that's the beautiful thing of it. And you got to be a part of something special and you got to be a part of wowing audiences and that's amazing. And so I really just wanted to say that is something that I've learnt through all of this, uh, through 10 years of doing props and I mean I've learnt a lot more along the way but this is definitely something that yes, all good things have to come to an end but my god, wasn't it fun? And theatre is addictive. So keep doing shows. They really are the most incredible things to be a part of. I love you guys and I know this video was a little bit different from my normal content. I'll be back soon with that, but I hope you guys have an amazing week and if you are suffering or have suffered from post-show depression, you are not alone. I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.